At this point I moved the workbench into its final position to give me a bit more space to work in. Because I messed up and put this drawer on the wrong side initially, I'm going to cut a piece of plywood to hide this messy piece. A while back a friend of mine who works in the engineering industry gave me this piece of plywood. I think it was used in some form of packaging for a pallet or something like that. And it's quite thick, it's an inch thick in fact. And I'm going to be using this to make the worktop for the workbench. The plywood had a few screw holes in it but I wasn't too worried about that. So with the workbench in place, I'm just going to measure up what size I want the top. I used a circular saw to make the cut and a straight edge just to guide the fence. And then I sanded the top with a 120 grit paper on the orbital sander. I'm going to fix the worktop with screws only, no glue because I want to be able to replace the worktop at a later date. I'm going to drive the screws in to the cleats first and leave them protruding a little bit. And then I'll put the worktop on, clamp it down to the legs and then drive the screws in to attach the top. I've got the worktop positioned where I want it now, so I just need to drive the screws in. Just gonna put a little bit of clamping pressure on. To refit the vise, I'm going to use this spacer block that I had on my old workbench. This will sit in between the worktop and the base of the vise and it will bolt in from underneath and I'm just going to use this as a template to drill the holes. I used a Forstner bit so that I could recess the bolt heads into the top of the workbench. So the problem I've got with this set of drawers in the middle is that they don't have any handles on them and it's a bit awkward to pull them open when there's a set of drawers either side. So I've salvaged the handles from the old kitchen units which match this one here and I've got three of those so I'm going to use those. So the distance between the two holes is 160 mil. So I'm going to mark up that distance on a piece of masking tape. And then I'll centre that by eye. And 
measure the distance either side 68 85 76 76 so now that's nicely centered and I want the handles to be three centimeters from the top Now I can drill the holes. I'm going to use a countersink bit just to centre the hole. Then I'm going to drill the holes with a 6mm bit which looks like the same size as the bolt. I'm just going to add a bit of oil to the drill bit. To tidy up the look of the workbench a little bit, I'm going to be adding a pine trim just to cover the plywood edges. First I wanted to add a piece to the front of the worktop, so I ripped a piece to size on the table saw and then smoothed it over with a hand plane. I held it in place and marked up the length I would need and made the cut on the mitre saw. Then I could apply glue and fire brad nails to fit. I used a light wood filler to fill the nail holes. Next I wanted to trim the bottom of the plywood box and this piece of trim would be wider than the rest of the pieces of trim that would cover the plywood edges of the box but I wanted all of the trim pieces to join with mitre joints. So I first marked up the length Cut it to size on the mitre saw. Then I set my square to 18mm which was the thickness of the ply. Marked up 18mm at each end. And then I cut a 45 degree angle up to that mark. Then I could fit the bottom piece of trim, making sure that the drawers would still open okay. I marked up where the centre of the bottom piece of plywood would be on the trim, just to guide where I would fire in the nails. And I used a plastic card as a spacer, just to leave a couple of millimetres gap between the trim and the floor. At this point my nailer decided to stop working. So I went back to the old fashioned way of doing things. I ripped the rest of the trim pieces to 18mm, the same thickness as the plywood. With all of the trim pieces fitted, I could then sand off the excess filler. 
I used some boiled linseed oil to bring out the grain nicely on the workbench, applied with a paintbrush. I salvaged this old metal drawer from my old workbench too, and fitted this to the bench with a couple of screws. Finally, I added this quick drying varnish to the worktop, just to make it a bit more hard wearing and easier to clean. So that's the workbench finished. The top has now had three coats of varnish, so it's got a nice sheen to it and hopefully it'll be fairly hard wearing. All of my drawers are filled. I've got screwdrivers, decent chisels, cabinet scrapers and bits and bobs in the top. In here I've got sanding discs, angle grinder discs, and multi-tool blades. Over here I've got files and old chisels, brad nails and hot glue gun, rags, rag and bone, hand planes and spoke shaves, Spanners, pliers, paint stuff, random salvaged metal things, and some handles. Now this is the drawer that's sort of the vice handle kind of gets in the way of. So I've put all my tool manuals in here as I don't refer to them very often. Sharpening stuff, stones, buffing compound, honing guide. And finally, large bottle of glue, drawer runners. I've got a couple of nooks and crannies in the bench as well. Up here, it's quite useful for keeping sheets of sandpaper. Not really sure what I'm going to do up here yet. And this gap here, I'm thinking I might install some kind of knife block because I've got nowhere to put my knives at the moment. That's about it for this one. It's been a fairly enjoyable build and the workbench is ready for abuse. <laughs>